One of the most applicable quotes in our lifetimes is by a gentleman named Joseph Rain, when he states that humanity's greatest hindrance is the denial of truth. And this could be applied in an indefinite number of scenarios throughout human history. It reminds me of an amusing story about uh, some of the early Western settlers in Australia when they came over from Europe and when they got settled in, they started writing home to their relatives and their friends and family back in Europe about this astonishing creature that stood as tall as a man and it had the claws of a wolf and the face of a deer and it hopped like a frog. Now, obviously no one believed them. I mean, could you really blame them with the complete lack of visual aid, communication tools, and evidence that they had, it's really no mystery as to why tons of myth and folklore ran rampant throughout human history. And it really brings me to another quote by the late John Maynard Keynes when he said that it's better to be roughly right than precisely wrong. Now, Keynes was an economist, right? So he focused a lot on data and numbers and analytics and the social structures of government. And Joseph Rain focuses on the collision of science and religion and how they're basically a lot more similar than we think. Now, the reason why I wanted to share these two quotes is because they're so applicable at this significant time period that we're living in where we could effectively check and guess and challenge each other in real time better than ever before due to the internet. And our ability to do this, you'd think, would instantly bring truthfulness to the world. But it turns out humans are really, really bad at accepting when we're wrong. And it turns out that that's because of biology. There is a psychological evolution in the human brain known as cognitive dissonance. And what cognitive dissonance is, is the inability for humans to come to grips with when we're wrong. And the reason for that is it's pretty simple, it's obvious. We all want to be looked up to. We all want people to follow us. We all want to be leaders in our you know, respective communities. And so when we're wrong, it's embarrassing. And it's hard for us to justify new information immediately and pivot our stances. So we attempt to justify our old information to mold and fit into the new information and try hard and hard and hard to actively avoid new information as well. But it's possible that we're all arguing about the same stuff. Let me give you an example. What, what if I told you today that God said, let there be light, and the universe was created. Now, that statement might make uh, a bunch of people feel very comfortable because it coincides with exactly what they believe in. There's no need to justify anything. Um, I'm right in my corner, and that plays perfectly in my current belief. And simultaneously, that might make half the room uncomfortable because we know that science is gathering evidence, and it looks like evolution happened, and the Big Bang happened. But are those two concepts truly and precisely in conflict with each other. It turns out we're going so far down the road of cognitive dissonance that even when information that's new is presented to us that often agrees with what we're saying, but not exactly, we still try to actively avoid or discredit that information. I'll give you another example. What if I told you that the universe and our reality is a contained creation carried out by some supremely intelligent being. Would I be talking about God theory or simulation theory? Now, if you haven't been living under a rock lately, basically simulation theory has been thrust at the forefront of science recently, and even economics, this idea that AI is taking our jobs or robots are gonna take over the world and things like the Matrix and Westworld on HBO. And even Elon Musk has come out and said that there's a one in billions chance that this is base reality right now. And that's scary for us to think about. There's a way where we can have a thought experiment that helps us come to grips with what we're actually talking about. And the simulation theory ascertains that some supreme being a thousand years or a hundred thousand years or a million years ahead of us has created this contained experiment and we're a part of it. But just think for a second. Think about your dog. 
to your dog, you're a supreme being, right? So it'd be asinine to sit your dog down and try to explain why you put on shoes every day or what Wi-Fi is or what a black hole is or how it's possible for literally basically anyone to run for president of the United States nowadays. <laughs> so your dog is in this contained reality of itself. So hypothetically speaking, if it talked to another dog, it would try to explain to that other dog what you are. And it's almost impossible for that dog to correctly communicate with its own species about what you are. Think about today, if I told you something and you whispered it through and we played telephone throughout this room, we may not even come to the same comparison of the Big Bang and let there be light. And yet, throughout millennia, are we all talking about the same thing? So when dogs, hypothetically, talk to other dogs, are they precisely wrong in their dogma? <laughs> or are they roughly right that we're demigods? <laughs> we have to remember that science is just a method of investigation. So there's really no such thing as not believing in science. It's just people going out, gathering data, bringing it back in. And sometimes that data will agree with what we originally thought in our hunches. And sometimes that data will com be completely wrong. And we're OK with that. Getting over our cognitive dissonance is the way. Most of the time, our original theories end up involved into something else. You know, the medical community, scientific community original, originally brushed off meditation. And now we have people like Wim Hof who are scientifically, clinically proving that meditation allows him to control his immune system to the point where he trained 20 other people in the same clinical study and they did it as well. So now science is going, wait a second, we have something here. Some of the time, our original theories are precisely wrong altogether. I mean, we used to prescribe cigarettes and cocaine in the medical field, um, and now we're looking at things like antibacterials where they may actually be more harmful than we originally thought, and that's okay. Think about it like a criminal investigation. You bring eight suspects in the room, and what we're trying to find is where we're precisely wrong. We're roughly right something happened, and it may be one of these eight people, but we want to find out where we're precisely wrong are roughly right is what we should be celebrating. So the primary separation here isn't the original hunch. It's the denial of truth. And we need to just come to grips with our cognitive dissonance and recognize that if it's embarrassing, so what? We are in the most significant time period in the human history where finally we can get the answers. So that begs the question, have we been roughly right for millennia? If the religious faithful think X in science brings back Y, it's entirely possible that the answer is Z, and we're all arguing about the same thing. So I'll leave you with this. What if I told you that right now we're all in possession of an interconnected set of quantum processes that's able to calculate information uh, exponentially across the globe, uh, in multiple languages because of some biological spherical matter that's floating in the vacuum of space. Would I be talking about the internet or our brains? It's possible we're in a simulation and they're one and the same. We might all be arguing about the same thing, but we're in a time period unlike any other where we can finally figure out where we're precisely wrong. And the human story is just now coming to fruition. Thank you.